Here we have an interesting map showing the global IQ scores in different countries. And if we look closer to Europe, we notice that there is like a 199, 102. Maybe the Italians have done it not so properly, so the measurements might be inaccurate. But nevertheless, when we look for Africa, we notice that, notice that we have numbers like uh, 59, 67, 71, and that kind of stuff. So there definitely is more than just the measurement difference or, or problems on the, on the sampling of the, of the tests. We can also look Asia, and we notice that Japan, China, Hong Kong, they have a higher numbers and um, the purpose of this video is to, to talk about what this then means when we have these kind of differences between the countries. First of all, the average is just an average and every people are different so basically the IQ is uh, only a Gaussian distribution of intelligence and uh, the, the people are root mathematically only divided to, uh, to the different levels uh, uh, according to the exact Gaussian probability. So this is the definition of the intelligence. So p per definition the IQ of uh, 130 means that there is uh, only 2% above this number. Also there is the lower end. There is only uh, 2% less than IQ 70 uh, in average. Of course, uh, it can be seen from the world map that's, that these tests were made for Europeans and that's, that, that's why the, the Asian numbers are different from the African numbers. It also should be noted that uh, these tests, due to their nature, probably cannot really measure above the deviation of Sigma 2 so which is exactly the 130 level uh, at least after six, six sigma 3 uh, any any reasonable results results aren't possible anymore here we can see the sigmas here is 100 is the average 115 130 and 145 all these lines are sigma 1 2 and 3 if you are bright you have upper 115 if you are a less than 115 you are normal if you are uh, above 130 you are uh, uh, gifted but uh, this curve goes also the other side and if we look that side there is a diagnosis code uh, for the uh, in intelligence level so the FCD ICD-10 F70 is a uh, is for example below 70 IQ below 70 and if it's above 70 it's said to be borderline intellectual functioning which is also uh, which also has a diagnosis code if you have an IQ level of 71 to 84 so basically IQ below 70 is, is uh, without a doubt a level where uh, uh, in Western countries uh, it's considered that you can get a retirement pay because nobody really expects you to be able to sort out your everyday living. With this information I want to name uh, these groups otherwise like just bright gifted or extraordinary ability because basically these are uh, uh, groups which are present in our society so I, I think below 55 intensive support is needed below 70 support is needed, below 85 unemployment is common, between 85 and 100 they are good workers but rather support workers, between 100 and 115 we can talk from skilled workers, above 115 but below 130 these people might be manage managers and business owners, above 130 but less than 145 this could be business developers for existing businesses 
and above 145 are these genies who have new ideas and which are able to invent new businesses. With this idea I can take the whole data of the world, the different countries and put them on the same Excel sheet. I have added here the, the factor for the population which is below 15 years old, the IQ, the, the true uh, population amount from 2019 and the rest is pretty much just mathematics so we, we, uh, we can solve the Gaussian distribution to different IQs and have an amount of people which has a, a higher than this IQ and uh, this brings up a quite big uh, data, sh data sheet but basically it's just, just a mathematic construction. I made four groups of the whole world. There is this Afro plus, plus Arab, uh, which is basically Africa and, and uh, Near East, uh, the Islamic countries. These I have combined because of the reason that they, their population uh, uh, has a high amount of children in them. Then I have made an Ecuador group, which is like a Brazil, India, all these countries around in Ecuador, which seems to have a, a quite different uh, shape of the uh, uh, of the children uh, grown-up ra ratio, uh, but still quite relatively uh, lower IQ. Then it's Asia. It's like uh, China, Japan, and all these uh, high IQ countries. Uh, with a, with a lot of population, South Korea, this kind of stuff. And then it's Europe. In Europe I have also added uh, Canada, USA, Australia, because of their, her their heritage. They are uh, or originally coming from Europe. Here the IQs are corrected uh, uh, according to the uh, part of the population which are younger than 20 years old, so that they, they are considered as uh, as a lower IQ citizens depending on the on their age. This graph uh, gives uh, the idea about the workforce quality in uh, different regions of the world, how much there is uh, supportive workers, skilled workers, managers or leaders. But from the previous graph it's uh, difficult to understand what it really means when there is a certain amount of managers and a certain amount of support workers. Here uh, is shown uh, the same situation in a way that uh, there is one manager and how many skilled workers or super workers each such a manager would then have as an employee. This graph show, shows the same situation but now here is also added the uh, expected unemployed people and the children. So here we can see that uh, in Asia there is like 10 persons per manager, but in Africa or Arabian countries there are over 100. And further this can be thought that maybe, maybe it's enough if, if you look what is the proportion of skilled workers compared to support workers unemployed and children. And here we see that there is uh, 3 persons in, in Asia pro skilled workers, but 16 in Arab and uh, Africa. Further, uh, we, can, we can think that if the leaders are the, the driving for the truly driving force of the society, so we there, there, here's the same graph produced uh, so that there is one leader and the rest are according to this. Gaussian distribution. So here we see that uh, in Asia there is uh, like a uh, 350 people per leader per high IQ person in Europe, 1300 in uh, equatorial countries, almost 15,000, and in Africa and Arab world, almost 60,000. So the difference from from 300 to 60,000 is also very huge. Well. It also can be seen what would be the company organization in such a country. So here we can see how many, uh, wor how, how much workforce each leader uh, would have. So one leader in Africa and Arabia would have been 14,000 
work, workforce when in Asia it's only I cannot even read a small amount from this table. Mm -hmm.